But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira his wife sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. And notice Peter asked Ananias, Why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Spirit specifically, and to keep back part of the price of the land, this being a type looking forward to what could happen during the sixth trumpet after Satan appears as the Antichrist if someone were to commit the unforgivable sin which is to not allow the Holy Spirit to speak through them after being delivered up to death which is one of Satan's names. As Christ says in Luke chapter 12 beginning with verse 10, and whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man it shall be forgiven him, but unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Spirit it shall not be forgiven given. And this word translated as blasphemous here is from number 987 in the Greek dictionary of the Strong's Concordance, which is from number 989, which as you can see is from a derivative of number 984 and number 5345. 984 means to hinder and number 5345 means a saying. So in other words, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit means to hinder the Holy Spirit from speaking through you if you're one of those who will be delivered up during the sixth trial. And when they bring you unto the synagogues and unto magistrates and powers, take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer or what ye shall say, for the Holy Spirit shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. And remember we saw a type of the Holy Spirit speaking through those of the church in Philadelphia back in chapter 2 of this book of Acts. And in the last two verses of chapter 4, we saw there Barnabas, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet, 100% of the money, not holding back anything, as opposed to Ananias and Sapphira, the Levites being what the millennial priesthood are called, so for those who will be delivered up during the sixth trumpet, Barnabas is a type of what to do, while Ananias and his wife are a type of what not to do. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, meaning Sapphira, the wife of Ananias, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered, Answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord, meaning the Holy Spirit? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then she fell down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost, and the young men came in and found her dead, and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. And notice there was no chance given for repentance because again this was a type of the unforgivable sin. This is why most Christians are blinded to the full truth of God's word to protect them from blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Only those who will have the seal of God in their forehead will be capable of not allowing the Holy Spirit to speak through them when they get delivered up to death, which again is one of Satan's names during the latter half of the five month long hour of temptation. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest durst no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them, and believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets, and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one, which you could see as a type of those who will upon repentance be healed of the first six plagues written of in Revelation 16, which are plagues of deception. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with them, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles, and put them in the common prison. But the 
angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life, meaning this eternal life through Christ Jesus. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together and all the senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all safety, and the keepers standing without before the doors, but when we had opened, we found no man within. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow, or as another translation has it, they wondered what the outcome would be. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us, meaning obviously the blood of Jesus, who is the woman seed written of in Genesis 3.15, as opposed to the serpent seed Satan used to bring about the crucifixion. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Spirit whom God hath given to them that obey him. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them, meaning physically, obviously, but in the futurist sense, it's through the Kenites and their four hidden dynasties that the seed of the mark of the beast gets planted in the foreheads of most Christians, which will come to fruition at 666 when Satan appears as the Antichrist. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space and said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Theudas, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about four hundred, joined themselves, who was slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing and drew away much people after him, he also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and let them alone, for if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beat them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And those who will be delivered up during the sixth trumpet shall be hated of all nations for Christ's namesake, meaning the true Christ's namesake, but what the Holy Spirit will say through them will cause many to repent, whereby they can take part in the first resurrection at the seventh trumpet when the true Christ returns as King of kings and Lord of lords, and daily in the temple and in every house they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ.